everyone. <laughs> Welcome back to the Museum Show and Tell Show. My name is Nicole. I'm from the Penitentiary Museum, and I'm here with Genevieve from the Hironi Museum. And today I had challenged Genevieve to find a very large artifact in your collection, because usually we're showing off very small artifacts that we can bring to you um, on these Zoom calls. And so I was interested to see if you had anything very large, maybe it's only gonna be in pictures, but something interesting in your collection. And for me, the item that I want to share is actually uh, an artifact that we have on our grounds. And it is, this is the picture of it, an 1879 steam engine. Wow. So this is the front of it. And here is the back of it. Here is a side angle of it. And um, this is the enclosure that it's in. And it's on our ground. And it was, um, owned by the Beck Manufacturing Company, and um, it was used um, for their spur line. So they had the railway that came to the town dock, and then they had a spur line up to their lumber mill that they used this steam engine on. And um, I do have a picture of it when it was in use here. There it is there. You could probably maybe see, it does say see Beck on the side of it. Looks quite fancy there. Um, this picture is maybe how people recognize it a little bit more because for many, many years, um, here's a color picture of it. It sat on the grounds just sitting here. Um, so a lot of people tell stories about in the 50s, uh, they uh, would go and play on it. it, would be like a playground. So this picture is actually from the 1950s. And I don't think they realize, you know, the importance of their little playground that they were on for those many years, because this is the um, one of only five steam engines still around from the late 1800s. It's the second oldest in Canada. It was originally built for the um, Hamilton and uh, Dundas Steam Railway, Steel Railway, Street Railway. And this is what it looked like at the time. And um, it was, so it was from 1879. And in October of 1897, um, it was actually crashed with another another one of these. And uh, that's when Charles Beck bought it and brought it up, up here and he reworked it. Um, it's called, a, it's a Baldwin steam engine. It's also called a steam jenny because interesting enough, this sort of outside carriage of it all was only there for or, sort of ornamental purposes. There was no um, purpose for it other than if you saw one of these steam engines driving down where you also had horses still in 1879 um, along the streets of Hamilton. This might spook a horse. This looked more like a carriage um, behind a horse and so this wouldn't spook the horses going along so that's why they put uh, that carriage over it and um, they still had a carriage on it here. So I think this was one of the, um, you know, that was built for it when it was not in operation as well, probably to protect it uh, a lot. And uh, yeah, so in the early 2000s, <laughs> uh, the uh, museum did receive a Trillium grant uh, to try to kind of clean it up a bit um, from because it was uh, they couldn't get it back to working order obviously um, but they did want to um, try to uh, preserve it so that it would not deteriorate anymore and um, so it was all cleaned up um, it was taken apart 
and um, and then sort of like repainted and lacquered and protected and then put back together. And then they did build the enclosure over it so that it wouldn't be harmed too much um, because of the elements, because it is not an item that we could fit inside our museum. And uh, so that was uh, sort of helping to, to sort of preserve it is to put that enclosure on there. And uh, we just open it up, you know, every day for when visitors come in and they can walk around and take a look at it. And uh, yeah, and so it's uh, one of our larger artifacts that we have here that has quite the history. Because you think back to 1879 when it was built, this is at the beginning of sort of the steam, steam engines and, and the whole like railway um, here in Canada. So wow. artifact, so. That's amazing. Yeah, so, you know, all those kids in the 50s and 60s were playing over something that had, like, you know, a lot of history uh, for, for Canada. So, um, so what do you have um, for us? Me? Today? All right. So what I have, I don't have, okay. So what I have, here's a map of Georgian Bay. And uh, historically, there were located about uh, 30 five lighthouses and uh, range lights on the shores of Georgian Bay and on a few of the islands as well. And so what I got here is um, something that had come from the Western Islands right here, the Western Islands Lighthouse. This is the photograph <laughs> of that lighthouse. It's hard to see. There we go, kind of. But this photograph is from 1909. It was taken by J.W. Bald. The artifact that I have here does not appear in the photograph. It dates to maybe the 1970s. I know the, the company that had um, built it was uh, founded in 1954. So what I've got is a fog signal emitter. Mm -hmm. And um, these, well, Fog, lighthouses and fog signals are, are devices that were used to, well, the, the fog signal itself to warn of navigational hazards or boats uh, in foggy conditions, possibly even on uh, the Great Lakes in the early navigation se uh, season and late navigation season, say March, April, October, November, and December, uh, when there could be some terrific storms on the lakes, snowy storms. Um, the fog signals would be used uh, then as well. Um, and there have been fog signals used historically, lots of different kinds. There were originally cannons were used. Uh, there were sirens, bells, um, ones called diaphones that used compressed air. But that compressed air diaphone um, makes, uses a lot of, uh, machinery to compress the air, store that compressed air, remove the condensed water from the air, and direct that air into a horn. Um, so I guess for efficiency's sake, these types of uh, fog signals were invented. Uh, these ones are electric. I'm not going to tell you exactly how they work. Um, but it's really hard to see in this photograph, but if you take a look at it up close, it looks kind of like an inverted uh, or like a, a loudspeaker on its. So this is where you would normally find the, the, the opening, I guess, of the loudspeaker. That's what it seems like to me. Um, and uh, Certain segments of it also look, if you're ever at the mall or in an elementary school and you can see the loudspeakers in the ceilings, that's kind of what it looks like too. It's really hard for me to describe, but sorry. <laughs> but anyway, um, normally you would see probably not quite as many as this. I'm not entirely sure how, uh, I guess the range for a signal like this. I know at least with one of these uh, emitters, that I have read that the decibel level is louder than what you would hear at an airport parking lot when the Concorde, that French, very uh, sophisticated and technologically advanced plane was taking off. I remember I heard one in Toronto a very long time ago when I was a kid and that sound still stays with me. It was 
high up in the air. It was coming in for a landing, but it was deafening. So the decibel level for just one of these um, would be louder than that. Normally they would have a range of about half a nautical mile to about five nautical miles. And a nautical, five nautical miles is uh, equal to about nine and a quarter kilometers. So that's a pretty big range. Um, although that really does depend on a lot of um, uh, phenomena like uh, wind or humidity or whether there were obstructions. Um, around or near this uh, foghorn. Regardless, this was given to us by the Canadian Coast Guard. And as far as I know, there are no um, fog signal emitters left on Georgian Bay. They use a different kind of system now entirely um, because as far as I know, none of the, the lighthouses are, or very few, are, are um, manned anymore. I think everything's gone automatic. So this is a obsolete piece of technology. They still exist in a different form. I've seen smaller ones that you can buy for say oil rigs um, off uh, offshore, uh, any kind of offshore um, technology, I guess, even ships. So this is like a, a precursor of those very small and uh, more modern uh, emitters. It's very hard to find a lot of information on this period, uh, but yeah, yeah they're there. <laughs> it's online. And unfortunately, we do have some information from some that were put uh, at Angus Island Lighthouse. Um, uh, we've got blueprints for them, but they don't really give us schematics and they don't really talk about how they were, how they were used. I think it was probably maybe implied or known. But anyway, that's what we've got. Hmm. Uh, fog signal emitter. Wow, and those are like outside, right? Beside the museum, is, right? Yes, yeah, in front of the museum. Yeah, our garden is right here. Okay, I've seen them. Had no idea what that was. I never. I it is not obvious. Yeah, no, and I never gone. I've never gone close enough to it to to look at it. Um, I just sort of saw it, you know, in the background. I thought, oh, I wonder what that is, and then just kind of went into the museum. <laughs> Um, yeah, so exactly. Yeah. So anybody that does, <laughs> even if you walk around near that Heroni Museum, now you know what those are because, yeah, I did not know that at all. That's that's really neat. I'm going to have to actually go up and take a closer look to them now. Look at them now. <laughs> <laughs> is there like a sign or anything with them to explain it? Or? There is. Okay. Yeah, we've got a sign, although it's not always there. We have a lot of people that take a shortcut through our uh, our property yeah. on the way from Midland into the park. And yeah. a lot of the signs that we put out get knocked off and stolen mm -hmm. and we find them in other parts of the park. So it's kind of hit and miss depending, <laughs> depending on the day and the season, I guess. Yeah. Well, I'm going to definitely, uh, the next time I'm cutting through <laughs> to get to the park, that's right. I will, uh, <laughs> I'm going to go and take a look at those. So that's great. A so wonderful what, piece of technology. It is. Yeah. And, you know, the fact that you can't find anything on online, there's a lot of stuff we have here. Unless someone has a great interest and puts that's a lot right. of research into something and puts it online, you know, we're the ones that have to to know everything about something and sometimes it's, it's exactly. difficult to know when there's nothing written about it but yeah so what is our theme for next week um i was thinking something actually uh transportation related oh yes oh I <laughs> should have waited, should have waited. <laughs> I, exactly well i figured i made a fool of myself a last week maybe a few weeks ago talking about my poor sons and how they can't distinguish between skirts and dresses yeah. and I admitted that I call everything a car so I thought maybe I'll learn the difference between at least a car and a truck and uh, <laughs> I can talk about something oh, with a little good. more knowledge next week yes <laughs> no that's a good one we haven't done that one so it's great no. all right so we'll see everybody next week when we try to explain transportation to you all <laughs> 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 All right, bye. Bye.